What is going on guys? So today I'm going to talk about five big worries and concerns that people have whenever they are going active duty. Alright, so the last video I made that I just talked about five big worries and concerns about people who are going to basic training. This one is going to be geared specifically towards those of you who are going active duty, more specifically in the Army. But pretty much all this stuff could apply to any branch that you're looking to join. But uh, on the like the last one where I'm going to cover some things that you really, that you're worried about that you really shouldn't be worried about in this video. Pretty much everything is a valid worry and concern that you might have, but I'm going to talk about how much you should actually worry about that. So I'm really going to be actually addressing and giving my thoughts on all of these worries that some of you have joining. Alright, so one of the first big worries and concerns that some of you might come across whenever you're thinking of going active duty, and that is going to have to do with your duty station. Where are you going to be stationed? Where is your home going to be? after you actually get out of training. And the reason for that is because number one, not all army posts are created equal. Some of them are great, some of them are in good locations, and some of them just suck and they're just in bad locations. There's not much to do around, maybe the base isn't all that great either, and there's just simply not that much to do. So that's a big concern, like am I gonna go to a nice post or a bad post? And then also you have to think about if you're gonna go to a station or if you're gonna get stationed somewhere, that is far away from home and that might be a big concern to you. And then the last little thing is you may be concerned or wanting to go overseas for your first station. You wanna to go to like Germany or something like that and you're wondering like, oh man, I really wanna join but I wanna to go to Germany. That's something that I really wanna do and you're worried that you might not get that opportunity at least in your first contract, All right? So this worry is super valid. Now it is something that you kind of definitely have to think about and definitely have to consider the possibility of being stationed somewhere that you don't really like, somewhere that isn't the area that you want to be. So somewhere that's not close to home, essentially. Now, the reason that this is something that is valid, it's because you can't really do anything about it. The only thing that you can do in regards to having an impact on where you're going to get stationed is the MOS that you pick, the job that you pick, or if you go airborne. So for example, if you get airborne in your contract and you just become an airborne soldier, you're about 50% likely to go to Fort Bragg. So you're gonna go to North Carolina, which for my brother's circumstance is great because we live in North Carolina, he's stationed in North Carolina, so it's only a couple hour drive for him to, to actually come home and visit the family. Now, if he was living somewhere else, in pretty much anywhere else in the US, it would be a lot longer drive, it would be a big trip, he'd have to take time off to actually come home, whereas right now, like, he could literally drive home come do something if there was something they had to do and then go back yeah it'd be a couple hours of driving but that's something that you know he kind of lucked out on in that situation same thing goes for infantry if you want to go infantry odds are you're probably going to get stationed at like fort benning or something at least that's the most likely situation where you're going to get stationed and then like how infantry a lot of times goes to fort benning you have all the different mos's that have different kind of posts and headquarters and stuff like that all over the US. So you can actually look that up on your own time. So if you look up what MOS you want to be and you can look up all the different duty stations, so you can basically look it up and see all the different bases and posts that actually have the MOS that you are wanting to join. And those are essentially going to be all the different possibilities in which way you could go. Now probably the next big concern, the second concern that people are worried about all the time is getting deployed a lot. Now this is kind of valid because for some people it's going to be the case. You hear all these stories all the time about, you know, maybe your recruiters even told you this, They're like, hey, you know, I joined and then like two weeks after I graduated from AIT, my unit was deploying and they deployed to Afghanistan or something. That is a possible scenario that could actually happen to you, but that's not the most likely of scenarios. Most people are going to just deploy one time in their first contract. So if you do like four years, you're probably gonna deploy once, although it's not even that likely anymore that you're going to deploy. Now, obviously things can change in the future as far as how often we're going to deploy, but the majority of soldiers who are joining right now probably are not actually getting a deployment if they only do their first contract. Now this is one that can definitely vary widely. Recently in the Facebook group from the people that I went to basic training with, you know, somebody had asked about uh, what everybody's been up to recently. And there were some people who, since I've joined that, were in my basic training platoon, have been deployed three, four, five times 
in just a matter of like four or five years and there's other people like myself who haven't been deployed at all. So it really just comes down to the unit that you're going to get assigned to and then other than that there's really nothing else that you can do to control it. Now the third big concern that people have whenever they join the military and go active duty is they're worried they're not going to get to see their family all that much. Now this one is going to be valid especially if you are single and you're getting stationed somewhere that is far away. Now if you're married and maybe you're stationed somewhere close then you're going to be perfectly fine. You're going to see your family just as if you maybe moved a couple hours away. It's going to be fine because if you are married and you're stationed somewhere in the US or where your spouse can actually go, then you know it's just like a normal job. You can actually just go to work, you do your army stuff, then come home to your wife and your kids. You get to see them every day. But as far as your more extended family, if you're stationed farther away, you're obviously not gonna get to see them all that often. Now, if you're someone that's single and you do kind of value you know, seeing your family on a regular basis and you get stationed somewhere that's far away, then the odds are you're not gonna see them all that much. You can get your leave and you get your time off to maybe travel home to go and see them or they can come and see you whenever they want, but it's not gonna be probably what you're used to. You know, a lot of people, you know, like every Sunday or at least once a week will go and visit their family and go see the majority of their family. That's kind of how my family does it anyways. But obviously if you're single and you're stationed far away, you're not gonna get to see your family all that much. But if you are married, you're gonna get to see your family every day as far as like your specific family. You might not be able to see your parents all the time or your brothers and sisters, but you will be able to see your actual immediate family now the fourth big word that I'm gonna talk about is probably the only one that's the most not valid for you to actually worry about and that is joining going active duty and just thinking that you're not gonna have a life for the remainder of your contract. If you do four years, you're like, all right, you know, my whole civilian life, everything I wanted to do is just over. I'm just gonna be doing headstrong, everything military for the next four years. And then finally, once my contract is done, then I can do whatever I wanna do. And that's just not true. In my opinion, being in the military, being active duty, is kind of just like having a normal job. Yes, you might be stationed somewhere else, which a lot of people do move for a job. So it's very similar to that. Just as long as you're not deployed, having an active duty job, being stationed somewhere stateside, is very much so like a normal nine to five job if you add PT in the morning. So with that being said, you wouldn't say somebody that has a nine to five job, they have no life, they can't do whatever. But you can do whatever you want after you get off of work. So if you're active duty, whenever y'all are done, whenever you're released for the day, which sometimes could be like one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, it could be a lot earlier, uh, but also it could be later in the day. But essentially when you're off, you can do whatever you want, just as long as you're not doing anything that's gonna get you in trouble. If you wanna take extra courses for college, if you wanna go out with your friends, if you wanna go play some sports, if you wanna just go shopping, if you just wanna go back home and watch Netflix or something, you can do whatever you want. You know, Just as long as you're not on the Army's time, then you have your life. You can do whatever you want. Just, as, just the same, if you're working a normal job, you can't just be doing whatever you want because they're paying you to work. Just like in the Army, when you're on duty, they're paying you to do whatever it is you're supposed to be doing. Now the only thing to put in here at the end of this little fourth point segment is that some days, yes, you're actually gonna have very, very long days and you're not gonna have much time to go home and the Army can do that. They can do that. You're a normal civilian employer. They can't just force you to stay after for forever or go on extended trainings over the weekend or things like that. They can't force you to do that really on the civilian side, whereas on the military, you're like, yep, we got a training coming up this weekend and you know we're gonna go over to this place for you know a couple of days so you're not gonna have a weekend. Maybe they'll do that, maybe they'll give you an extra day off, whatever, it's really up to the unit, but there is still definitely the possibility of longer days, you know, you know, long month-long training exercises that you have to go to. That's definitely a possibility, but for the most part, yes, you're still gonna have a life if you go active duty. And the fifth and probably biggest concern that pretty much everybody has whenever they join the military, whether it's active duty or not, and that is what if I hate the military? People are just worried, it's just so scary, it's just such a different thing than the civilian world. You're just worried that you're just not gonna like it. And with this one, I mean, I hate to say it, but there's literally almost no way for you to actually know if you're going to enjoy the military or not. You may, you know, even join the reserves and not like the reserves, but for the fact that you just wanna do more 
army stuff, which in that case, you can switch to active duty. But the thing about being active duty, you're not gonna know if you're gonna enjoy it. It's just, the military is just so different than the civilian world as just far as the lifestyle, the way you live, just being, you know, sworn to do your job. You know, if you go to a normal employer, you don't swear to do whatever it is that they're gonna have you do. If you wanna quit, you can quit. Whereas in the army, you can't quit. Like you can't just wake up one day and be like, ah, I don't wanna go to work today. You can't just wake up one day and be like, ah, I don't wanna go to PT today. You can't do that. There's gonna be major consequences to you doing that. So that scares a lot of people. And I hate to say it, but there's really no way to know. You might go in there thinking that you're a little unsure and you may end up loving it. Likewise, there's people who think that they're gonna love the military and they join and they're like, wow, this is not what I expected. This is not what I signed up for. This is not what I wanted. And they just hate it. And they just count down the days until they get out of the military. So that is it for my five big worries and concerns that you guys have. There's obviously a whole bunch of different ones that you actually could be worried about because there's just infinite things that you could be worried about. But those are five big things that I see all the time. I hope you guys kind of enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. That would be awesome. If you want to check out some more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That would be even better. Follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, if you haven't already. I hope you guys have an amazing freaking day, and I'll see y'all later. Drop.